So I had this conversation with a friend um, who asked me um, how I started pole dancing. And um, incidentally, she's also a pole dancer and a studio owner, in fact. Um, but uh, because she was such a close friend, I was able to tell her um, that that was how I started. And actually, um, I have a writer's group also um, that I regularly attend slash run. Um, but I have a few pole dancers um, who are also writers in my group as well. And um, one of the writers had also mentioned that that was something that she had also experienced when I shared this piece to kind of like workshop it a little bit, um, that she also started pole dancing because she was also assaulted. So um, it just kind of made me realize how, um, how pole dancing can be a sort of like healing space for a lot of people um, and kind of like the ways that the human spirit can navigate something traumatic like that happening and um, and find ways to um, like work that out, you know, and like heal, which is great. <laughs> so that's the, that was a little bit of the background for the piece that I wrote. <laughs> really powerful. <laughs> I think I mentioned that in my monologue that, um, you know, you get like really bruised up. Like I just practiced honestly. And I, my arms feel like they're sore. <laughs> like I'm like, Ugh, noodle arms. Um, but yeah, I mean, it makes me feel really strong. Like it definitely does actually make me stronger. Um, and yeah, I just, it feels like joy. <laughs> Um, I think it's so important and imperative for me as a pole dance instructor and as a pole dancer to acknowledge um, the contribution that sex workers have had um, to pole dancing in general. I think that right now there's a sort of gentrification that's sort of happening. Um, there's a hashtag that, that's going around um, that's um, hashtag not a stripper um, and calling it pole fitness as opposed to like pole dancing. And I know that there are several different types of pole dancing, right? There are, you know, there is a, a, a type of pole dancing that's more focused on like, kind of like a gymnastics on the pole, like you're flipping around, stuff like that. And that there, there is another, um, another type of pole dance that's called exotic, that you're wearing heels. It's, it's, a diff it's definitely a different style. Um, but I think that we would be completely remiss if we didn't acknowledge um, again, the contributions that sex workers have made and the importance of, um, like, honestly, advocating for sex workers' rights. Like, if you are a pole dancer, you should absolutely, <laughs> you should absolutely, you know, be advocating for sex workers' rights, because if you're not, you're part of the problem, honestly. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of a heavy question because I, I don't know that, um, you know, I feel like maybe there's this idea, like not that you in particular, but just like in general, there's an idea that exists, like you, you deal with it and then you come out on the other side and you're like done, that's it. But I feel like for me, um, it is an ongoing journey. It's something that I have to navigate. So I don't know if I have any, <laughs> any specific advice um, in terms of like how to deal with it. But I guess at the very base um, that consent is important. Um, no means no. Um, and even like, even if you don't specifically say the words no, it doesn't mean that it's okay for someone to assault you, you know? Um, and that every person is deserving of um, respect, you know, dignity, like consent, all of those things. Um, and uh, yeah, just that every single person is worthy of that, like deserves that. 